many powerful words today. After the EPA says it won't pay for claims from the Gold King mine spill, after all, Colorado senators both call next to offer a bipartisan smackdown. Absolutely, the EPA broke a promise. And we will make them meet the promises by changing the law. She was the youngest marcher alongside Martin Luther King Jr. that day on the bridge. I told them I wasn't dead and I wasn't getting in that hearse before my time. Now she's the bridge to a new generation in Denver. The moderator of Meet the Press isn't mincing words, whether he's actually talking about the Broncos or Republicans' plans to repeal Obamacare. People say if you have two quarterbacks, you really have none. In this case, if you have six health care plans running around, you really have none. A principal teaching students about the true meaning of discipline. The minute I hit, I knew I was paralyzed. And the last word each week always belongs to you and your good news. That makes me so, so happy. This is next. Today, the EPA looked into the faces of all the Coloradans who suffered losses from the Gold King mine spill that the EPA caused, and it said, so sue us. The EPA denied $1.2 billion in claims, citing the government's sovereign immunity. I spoke with Colorado's U.S. Senators by phone. Democratic Senator Michael Bennett and Republican Senator Cory Gardner are promising to fight this. They said they would, they would make everybody whole as a result of the accident that they caused, and uh, they have clearly not done that. And if this was the conclusion they were going to reach, I don't understand why they didn't tell this, us this a year ago instead of stringing this out until uh, the midnight hour of this administration. And they're saying that in order to fulfill their promise that these small businesses would have to hire lawyers and sue the federal government. Uh, they're asking them to be uh, David and Goliath against sovereign immunity, and that's not right. Senator Gardner's and Bennett were both optimistic when I asked them if they expect that Congress will be able to find a solution to reimburse Coloradans impacted by this environmental disaster. A disaster caused accidentally by an EPA contractor who breached the mine in August of 2015 in southwest Colorado, releasing more than 3 million gallons of toxic yellow wastewater into the Animas River, which flows from Colorado into New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah. Colorado's delegation is united on this issue. They're divided on what to do with the Affordable Care Act. Senator Bennett, a Democrat, is a supporter. Senator Gardner, a Republican, wants to repeal Obamacare. Gardner has been front and center on that this week, and liberal activists in Colorado want us to make a story of it. Here's the story. They're probably not going to like it. Gardner has been presiding over the Senate discussions on Republican plans to repeal and replace the ACA. That largely clerical, albeit high-profile function of presiding over the Senate has all these progressives in Colorado trying to get the media, including next, to make Gardner the face of the repeal effort. These media pressure campaigns happen all the time. We get emails, tweets, Facebook messages, all expressing this common sense of outrage, this time suggesting that we are willfully ignoring a big story because Senator Gardner is the one holding the gavel. Gardner, of course, supports repealing and replacing Obamacare. That is not new or news. Just to make sure that I'm not missing something here, we brought in another expert. Joined now by NBC's Chuck Todd, moderator of Meet the Press. Chuck, appreciate your time as always. Oh, happy to do it, Kyle. So I'm curious what you make of this effort by liberal groups in Colorado to paint Colorado Republican Senator Cory Gardner as the driver of repeal of Obamacare. I would just say this. I think I'm, I'm used to seeing this in a, in a lot of states. I mean, you'll have activists try to paint um, their senator, if it's of the other party, or their congressman as sort of the face of this. But ultimately, Cory Gardner uh, is not the face, I think, of this health care debate that's going on right now. I mean, this really is about the leadership, Donald Trump, uh, and then Tom Price, who is Donald Trump's pick to run HHS, uh, the one cabinet agency that will essentially implement this. How does this shake out in the end because of the fact that Republicans do not have a cohesive replacement plan? Are they going to splinter into groups? Do you expect that Trump will help them find a united front? I have to tell you, I think this is a, uh, this is a puzzle uh, because I, I see a, a lot of potential pitfalls for Republicans that are going forward. And there's a lot of Republicans on Capitol Hill who are nervous about this because right now there's about six different uh, replacement plans circulating on, uh, in, in Washington. And if, to put this in football terms, you know, you ever heard of a two quarterback system? And most people say if you have two quarterbacks, you really have none. In this case, if you have six health care plans running around, you really have none. For the record, Chuck, here in Denver, we're very happy with both Trevor Simeon and Paxton Lynch, and we're certain that the new coach is going to straighten that out for us next year. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. 
Chuck does not seem convinced about the Broncos. Governor John Hickenlooper is ready to support President-elect Trump. That would be a real headline, right? It, it's true, but it sounds more like clickbait than we really want to do around here. The governor said that to our politics guy, Brandon Riddiman, today, when the governor was asked if he'd do anything to insulate Colorado from changes made by a Trump administration. I may not have voted for him, but my job is to make him a successful president, right? The election's over. Uh, again, we're going we're gonna to protect our, you know, the progress we've made, and we're going to certainly stick up for civil rights and protecting the environment. We're not going to cross any of our core values. But part of our job, and I speak for every governor in the country, part of our job is to do everything we can to make this administration successful. We are all Americans. We will resume that stirring rendition of Kumbaya on Balance of Power here Sunday mornings during the 8 o'clock hour. CDOT is warning drivers for this holiday weekend that if they do not behave, CDOT will pull this interstate over and we will sit there, okay? Last weekend, CDOT stopped traffic in a few different places to allow the plows to come through and do their work. And if the roads get that bad again, or if avalanche control work is needed, drivers are being warned to be prepared to sit and wait. Theo the Beagle is the latest dog in Denver to go on an adventure that ended with a taxpayer-funded rescue. You write to Next all the time asking whether these dog rescues are reimbursed. They're not. Theo escaped from a backyard near Sloan's Lake today. And you know those geese can't resist them. Firefighters had to keep calling for backup because Theo made it to the island and kept running away from them. They eventually got him and Theo's back with his owner who will not be charged for the rescue. And that's because the city doesn't want people attempting risky rescues on their own in order to just save a buck. Not sure what the kids at Stanley British Primary School in Denver were expecting out of their Martin Luther King Jr. assembly. The woman who sat before them, Linda Blackman, was the youngest person in Dr. King's March from Selma when she was 14 years old, little older than the students who sat before her today. I left, left Selma at 14 years old, and by the end of the four, uh, four day, five night march, I was at the ripe old age of 15. I turned 15 on the road to freedom on March 22nd. The day was frightening. It was terrifying because we had never met violence. I heard this pop, pop, pop. Then this gas was just all around us and you couldn't breathe and you couldn't see. And I ran into um, this cloud of tear gas and this man is running behind me, beating me. I, I did pass out because when I woke up, I was on a stretcher and they were about to put me in the back of a hearse. We didn't have ambulances then for black people. I told them I wasn't dead and I wasn't getting in that hearse before my time. It took me a while to just really start talking about it. Talking about it to me is a real cleansing of my spirit. I just hope that they, I inspired them in some way to stand for something someday. Danielle Grant writes a love letter, and she lets us see it. It's actually a lot less awkward than it sounds. Love the forecast or hate it, it is already written as well, but not in stone, never is in Colorado. And a principal tries to teach her students about perseverance, an inch at a time. Next. meteorologist Kathy Sabin. If you're headed to the high country for the weekend, this is what you will find. Heavy snow, record snow, so much fun, and the powder is chest deep, but avalanche danger remains high. And the storm that brought all of that weather to the west is now moving east. Winter weather and travel advisories are out for the southern mountains late in the weekend, but the big story is off to the east. A major ice storm setting up from eastern Colorado through Oklahoma City, Wichita, right into the Memphis area, already accumulating ice on the roadways. 
expecting down power lines, dangerous driving conditions, and power outages. We're watching this warm storm approach from the southwest, and so we'll get a little break across the state tomorrow. Decent travel weather, I-25 and I-70. Things change here along the front range Sunday afternoon with the potential for a little accumulating snow by Monday morning. Monday holiday for many, but certainly snow could be a factor for your outdoor plans. Tonight, hazy, calm, cold and dry, our low at 18. Tomorrow, beautiful day. If you don't mind a little bit of cloud cover, temperatures seasonal with a mix of clouds and sunshine. That'll carry us into the first part of Sunday. Snow develops Sunday night into Monday, about one to four inches possible around here, and then an unbelievable warming trend with temperatures back close to 60 degrees the middle of next week. Ah, so beautiful out there right now and so much fun. Kathy, thanks. Meteorologist Danielle Grant loves Walden, and Walden loves Danielle. Now they spent two days together. Danielle was stranded there in the storm as she tried to get to a weather conference in Steamboat. D. Grant was so touched by that town, she decided to write Walden a letter. Dear Walden, to many, you may just be a spot on the map, but to me, you have become so much more. I would have never imagined I'd be stranded all alone in your tiny town. I rolled in with white knuckles, braving one of the scariest drives of my life. Complete whiteout conditions only to find out the highway to Steamboat was closed. No hotel rooms, no problem. You graciously opened up your churches and schools for us weary travelers. I still can't believe that wrestling gym turned into my home away from home. The teachers and principal at North Park schools gathered piles of blankets and sleeping bags, and I luckily packed the wine and snacks all the comforts of home for a 50-person sleepover. It's funny how complete strangers can become the best of friends. Like Mary and Kate, we took on the town, breakfast at the Moose Creek Cafe, a stop into Klondike Liquor Store, where the owner Charlene couldn't bear for us to sip our wine that night out of red Solo cups, so she gave us glasses. We strapped on our skis and boards and cruised Main Street, getting to know those who call this place home and those who were stranded too. Of course, we couldn't miss the local watering hole, the Stockman Bar, where they have never met a stranger. Linda, one of the owners, even brought out some elk sausage on the house. It's amazing how quickly I felt a part of the North Park family. So thank you for the warm place to stay, even if the wrestling mat smelled like stinky seventh graders. For the delicious home-cooked meals, for the generosity and kindness, and for the most unexpected Wild West adventure. I believe things happen for a reason. I may never know why our paths crossed, but I'm sure glad they did. Walden, I'll be back. Just when the snow melts, the wind simmers down, and the sun shines. Your newfound friend, Danielle. I have an end goal, and that end goal is to walk again. You can doubt her now. You won't in a minute. And she's not the only Coloradan convinced that when something horrible happens, you control what happens next. It's a nice way to have purpose. If the students at Ralph Moody Elementary in Littleton need a life lesson, they don't have to look further than their front office. Their principal is going through a tough time, but the way she's handling it really could teach us all about the power of the human spirit. All right. Spirit is not a muscle that can be strengthened by this machine. Yep. Allison Mallory will tell you it takes much more to toughen spirit. And relax. I've always just been somebody who is very goal oriented. And at that point, my goals just had to change. Her goals changed on December 23rd when she overshot a snowboard jump at Keystone and landed on her back. The minute I hit, I knew I was paralyzed. And I literally said to myself, you're paralyzed. And I just accepted it. There's really no other option. Okay. She accepted it, accepted she would be paralyzed from the waist down. She says that's the only option a goal-oriented person has. I have an end goal, and that end goal is to walk again, whether it's in braces or on my own. And in order for me to do that, I can't have any other attitude. I like these because these help with my transfers. Mallory will tell you spirit is strengthened first through support. The crews that got her off the mountain, the doctors who operated on her back, the physical therapists who keep right. pushing her, the students who made cards, and the people she doesn't know who just reached out to cheer her on. It just makes you feel so loved, and I just can't even describe how appreciative and grateful I am for that. I just want to look down. Yeah. Dang. Dang. But spirit is strengthened. Gosh, I can't believe I'm standing. Through conviction. Wow, it's cool. 
I've got to depend on some nerves to connect back to my muscles. And that's out of my control. And so I can work as hard as I can, but if that doesn't happen, I'm going to be in a wheelchair and I'm going to be okay with that. And I'm going to be the best person in a wheelchair that I can be. Thank you. Now, Dr. Mallory wants to be back in her office at Ralph Moody Elementary before the end of the school year. She still has a few more weeks of intense therapy, though, at Craig before she can move home, Kyle. Her story and inspiration mm -hmm. to a lot of people get in touch with her on Facebook. Without question, Steve, thanks so much. A woman we met in Aurora today told us, you can be nice or you can be ugly. It doesn't take any extra effort to be nice. And we think her type of nice, what she does for hospitals and the homeless, should really be on the news more often. Our Noel Brennan has the story. Once you master the basic stitches, stitch by stitch, it's pretty much the same. Diane Duncan looks for purpose. I love it. I love the way the colors are. Purpose in patterns. Lining up these patterns. This pattern is pretty much one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Her fingers learn to crochet. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. <laughs> from YouTube videos and more than a year of practice. I would say I'm somebody who really, really enjoys crochet. Most of her crochet creations and those she'll make from yarn yet unraveled, Diane will give away. It's an angel baby blanket for children's hospital for babies that pass on. A gift she gives to parents who've lost the most precious gift of all. Then they can take that keepsake home for the baby, you know, and have a remembrance of their little one. A gift Diane would have wanted two years ago this March 8th. Her own daughter to have. My daughter had a miscarriage, um, lost her first baby, Levi. The loss was as unexpected. Difficult time. As the purpose Diane found. Stitch by stitch. First with a crochet hook. And yarn. It was a way to um, honor Levi's short little life. A purpose found in a pattern of kindness. It's a nice way to have purpose. Diane Duncan hopes to pass on. You know, you can't change the whole world, but you can change a little part of it. For next, you know, I'm Noel Brennan. That you can. Diane's donated dozens of blankets to Children's Hospital, and you can find her hats warming the heads of people who are homeless across our cities. Share the story of someone you know whose wonderful work is going under the radar. Email next at 9news.com or get our attention with the hashtag HeyNext. Best part of the week, our Friday night tradition, your good news, next. Your feedback now. Daniel Drager tweets, visiting from California found next. No murders, no filler, no crap. Let's all hope this is the future of news. I'd watch. That's nice, Daniel. I hope you're able to catch the show tonight. We skip the random murders and crime again to make room for what might be the most popular segment that we ever run here. Each Friday night, when we ask Coloradans, what's your good news? Photojournalist Tom Cole took his camera and the question up the hill to Bailey. <laughs> I'm still working. That's my good news. Happy to be alive. The Broncos have a new head coach, and they're undefeated in 2017, and the Raiders are 0-1. Isn't that good? Always grateful for some short sweater. We made it off the uh, highway within five hours, which I heard was, was uh, pretty, pretty good, from Vail to Denver. My sophomore son, Logan, at Platte Canyon lettered in football last night. Yeah. Woohoo! Super excited that we're so healthy. We just got back from Mexico. No rocks have been thrown at us. We have not seen any footprints, and we had no sightings. We have more and more people coming through Bailey and checking out our little town. It makes me so, so happy. It's dumping snow in the mountains, and I love it. <laughs> and Bailey people are great. They've adopted us, and we've adopted them. Old love, old lady. So that's why Tom asks, can we have yodeling on next? See you next time.